Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to create a pressure cylinder in Autodesk Fusion 360. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to come over here to our planes. And you can open this up by clicking where it says origin on this little arrow. And you can drop down to the YZ plane here. And we're going to come over here and create a new sketch. And what we want to do from here is come down to create, come to rectangle and select two point rectangle. We're gonna click on the origin and we're gonna drag this all the way out here. And I'm going to come up to sketch dimension because I wanna set a dimension here of 10 inches. And I want this dimension here to be, let's say 0.5 divided by two. And we're gonna see why in a moment. So right now I have a 10 inch long rectangle and it's a quarter inch um, tall. So I'm going to finish my sketch and I can come to revolve and I can click on this bottom line here and that's going to revolve my sketch. So the profile that's selected is the closed shape. The axis is the bottom line and this is a new body. I'm gonna hit okay and that has created a solid bar. So what we want to do from here is we want to come back to our um, sketch. So I'm going to right click on the sketch I created and edit it. And what I can do now is I can just create a line here in the sketch and I can kind of move this where I want using a dimension. And what I want to do is I want to make this about 0.5 inches from the end. And that's going to work well for us for now. We're going to finish this sketch. And if I come back to my feature, I can edit my feature. And if I so choose to, I can deselect this part of it. So that's what I'm going to do. And what I can do is I can come back to my revolve. And for the profile, I can select the original sketch. Uh, you may need to show that original sketch, so you may have to come back and click on uh, right over here, this eyeball. That way when you revolve it, you can see it. So now it's visible, I can select the profile and I can select the axis, which is this bottom line here. And what I wanna do is I want to create a new body and now I have two bodies here. And we're gonna see why that's important. So what I wanna do from here is I wanna come down to create. I'm gonna come down to thread. And I'm just gonna click on this face here. And I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm creating a thread. So if I click on modeled, you're gonna see that I could actually model in the thread. And if I so choose to, I can change the um, amount of threads, the designation here. So I can make this a 20 or a 24. Or I can go even more to a, say a 27. So we can just leave it the way that it is now. And as you can see, my bar now has a thread right here at the end. And I can always right click thread edit feature. And I can change this to be say a 1224 if I want. I can also change the class so I can make this, you know, for, for this particular designation, they only have so many options. For this one, you can change it. You can make it a 1A or a 2A or a 3A, depending on the accuracy you want. So um, that's gonna be good for us. And so from here, what we wanna do is, um, we want to create one more extrusion and the way that we can do that is by editing our initial sketch once again. And this is a great way to work because right now I have one sketch and I'm creating a lot of different features out of that one sketch. So I can actually add a second line here. And what I could do is I can make this dimension one inch from the end and I can set another dimension here for this one to be 0.5. So now I have two lines and what I need to do is I need to change my second 
feature here. So I'm gonna deselect this one. And let's create our third revolution. So I'm gonna select this profile. I'm gonna to come to axis. I'm gonna select this axis. And that's gonna be our uh, piece right there. So um, what I can do is I can actually extend this if I want just by editing the initial sketch. So um, for instance, one interesting thing I can do is I can double click on this dimension and then click on this initial one and then just do plus 0.5. And basically if I change this dimension, if I make it 0.6, then this dimension is gonna move also. I can make it 0.7. See how it always moves up by 0.1? That's because this dimension, it's basically saying that whatever this dimension is, you just add 0.5 to it because this dimension is, is D6. So it's uh, you're basically linking the dimension. That's gonna be very helpful for us. So uh, from here, what we wanna do is wanna create actually another um, sketch here. And for this one, we can actually create it again in this original sketch. So what I can do is I can come to line and I can create a couple of lines here. I can drag this out to about here. And I can just kind of move this around and draw out the shape that I want. And this is going to be kind of like the shape of the cylinder. And what we want to do here is we want this revolution soon to be to fit over this one. So I'm gonna set a dimension between these two lines. And for right now, I'm gonna make it five thousandths of an inch. So they're gonna be extremely close to each other. And I, I can also kind of move this in a little bit. Now, the great thing is I actually know where my threads are because of the box that we made here. You can see that this is where the threads are and then this is the straight part. So, that being said, um, we want to add a couple uh, more refined things here. I want to add another box and another, whoops, and another box. And I want these to line up. So I'm going to click on these two points and I'm going to make them horizontal with each other. And I can also set a dimension on this line. And I want this to be, let's say, about 60 thousandths of an inch. And I can kind of drag these out. And I can actually, if I click on this line and I click on this line, I can come over here to where it says equal and make them equal to each other. And I can also set a dimension on one of them for this distance. And that's going to set the other one as well, as you would imagine. So 0.125. And they're both going to be the same now. And I can set a dimension between them. So I want this to be, uh, let's say, 0.2 of an inch. And I can kind of, you can see that now this is the last constraint that I need, is I need to set them, the distance between them. An easy way to do that is I can just kind of draw a line between them. Or it would probably better draw a line here at the top. And I can make this line construction. And if I click on this main line and the line that I just created, um, which may be hard to do, you may, you may need to just drag between them to select everything. If I do that, I can come over to midpoint and that's gonna make a midpoint between them. So um, I hope this was easy to see. It may be hard to see with the quality of the video, but there are two lines here. There's this main line, and there's a line I made between these two shapes. You can see it right here. I selected both of them by dragging through both of them, and then when they were both selected, I came over here and clicked on midpoint, and that made the midpoints of the lines touch each other. They're now connected. Okay, great, so that's, that's around the, the place where we wanna be right now. I'm gonna come over here to trim and I'm just gonna trim some of these lines away. And if you get an error message, don't let that scare you. It's just, 
in, in uh, Autodesk Fusion is basically just telling you that some things were changed and that's to be expected. Um, we can move this in a little bit and we can finally set a dimension here for the height. So I want this distance to be, we can set it to be 0.375 for now, just for this example. And that being said, we can also uh, create a threaded section here. So what I can do is I can place a couple lines here, place a line from this point to this point, as well as from this point to this point. And what I want to do is set a dimension between them. And I want that dimension to be the same as the other threaded dimension that we created. Now, you don't have to worry about exactly where it is, but what we're going to do is we're just going to set it vertical to this line. So I'm going to click on these two points and make them vertical to each other. So basically, um, what I did is I just created two lines that intersect to this shape, just the top shape, and it corresponds to these two lines at the bottom, and there's a gap between them. So with that created, what we want to do is we want to test this out to make sure that we can actually create a feature from this. So I'm going to finish the sketch. And so as you can see, just to show this for the, for the example, this is a closed shape, this is a closed shape, and this is a closed shape. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to come to Revolve, and I'm going to see if there's an axis. So I'm going to click on this axis here. And for the profile, I want to select this profile. And I also want to select this profile here. Um, it's not letting me select that um, at the same time. So we're just going to hit OK on, on this one. And as you can see, it's created that shape, that revolution. So from here, what I can do is I can take it a step further and I can create a revolution for this body and I can choose the same axis and this is going to be a new body and I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to show you the reason for that. So let's come down to bodies and let's hide the shaft and let's hide the shaft section. And we can also choose to hide this piece we made. All right, great. So now we're just looking at the part we need to edit. What I want to do is I want to come down to Create, down to Thread, and I'm going to select the inner thread here. And I want this to be the same thread as before. So I need to make sure that this matches the other one. This is a half and, tw and a half by 12. Let's see what this one was. Um, this feature was a half and a half by 20, so I need to edit this one. This is a half and a half with 20. Great, so we're going to leave it at that. And now we have our threads. You can see inside there we have our threads. And this is kind of like a little section of the rest of our parts. So I can come back and unhide our other things here. Great, so... From here, we're just, we're just going to create the um, other revolution we need. So I'm going to select this profile, and I'm going to select this axis right here. And for this one, this is going to be a new body as well. And there you have it. So um, what we can do from here is we can kind of change the colors a little bit it might be a little bit easier for us to work so change the appearance and I'm gonna make this this sort of uh, maybe a paint or a plastic and it doesn't really matter much as long as you can see a stark contrast so you can really choose whatever you want you can make this say red and you can make this piece here red as well. And that's going to be a big help to us. So um, from here, I'm just going to rotate this around and show you what we've created so far. And 
this is not that helpful on its own. It's actually important to understand what's going on inside here. So let me come to Tools and Section Analysis. And if I select this right here, this face, what I can do is I can look directly into the part and you can see that we actually have our threads and you can see that they're matching up. So that's really great. That's what we want to see. And you can see uh, some of the other sections as well. So that um, concludes the design of our uh, plunger. Let's continue by creating a couple of gaskets. Now we're going to do that by zooming in a little bit here and I'm going to right click on our first sketch again and edit the sketch. And from here what I can do is I can come back to my two-point rectangle and I can drag out a rectangle here and I can also drag out another rectangle here. And what I'm going to do from the get-go is I'm going to select these two lines, make them equal, and I'm going to select these two side lines also and I'm going to make them equal as well. And from here, the best way to control this is by adding a dimension. So what I want to do is I want to make the distance here to be 5 thousandths of an inch, 0.05. And I want to do the same thing on the other side here. And if I think that that's too large or too small, I can always come in and even make it zero if I want and have them touching. I can make it uh, one thousandths of an inch if I want it to be really close. And I'm going to do that here. Uh, same deal. So I'm just going to select this initial dimension. And again that's a linked dimension. And I want to do the same thing here on the bottom. This is going to be one thousandths of an inch and this will as well. So as you can see I've created two new sketch, two new closed shapes right here and you can see that there's a one thousandth of an inch gap so I'm going to finish the sketch and what I want to do is come back to solid and I'm going to do a revolve. I'm going to select this profile and this profile and I want to select this axis right here and with that selected, this is going to be a new body. Um, and we're just going to hit OK. So as you can see, our new body has been created. And if it's hard to see, you can always come here to where it says Analysis and just kind of click on this, and then you're going to see it show up. And what that is, is that's the gasket, a rubber gasket, that's going to fill in the gap between our plunger and the cylinder itself. So from here what we want to do is we want to come back to our original sketch and we want to look at what we have here. Now we've created our two gaskets here at the top but we also need one here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to line and I want to do the same sort of thing here and one way to do that is I can kind of set the dimensions to be around the same. So I can click on this line and when I drag out the dimension I can select this dimension which is 60 thousandths of an inch. And I can also dimension the top line and I can make it an eighth inch. And if I drag this inward uh, to about here then um, that's where it's going to be placed. Now I can always move this out a little bit if I need to. In this case I'm going to have to. And because of the fact that we're creating everything in the original sketch, you have a lot of freedom. Um, as you could see I was able to change the dimension of something that we did a long time ago here, this extra edge. 
Uh, so that that's going to be very helpful for us. So um, what I the last thing I want to do is I want to trim this line. And I also want to add a two-point rectangle, and that's going to act as the gasket. And as you can see, my gasket is actually overhanging the cylinder. It's overhanging the cylinder because they need to be in contact with each other, and they need to, they need to be interfering with each other. So let me set this dimension to be one thousandth of an inch. And let me set the other two dimensions to also be one thousandths of an inch. And you can either link it or not link it. It's whatever you want to do. For this example, I'm just going to type it in because it's faster. And with the overhang, what I can do is I can just set a dimension between here and here and kind of estimate out that I want it to be maybe uh, ten thousandths up from that line. And we're just going to finish the sketch. And what I can do is I can kind of inspect uh, some of the revolutions that I've done uh, because we want to alter it a little bit. Um, as you can see, this revolution is now a different profile. It, it has this part cut out. And the last thing we want to do is we want to create a revolution for this gasket. Now be sure that your entire gasket is selected. So that's this and this, the overhang as well as the original rectangle. And for the axis, you're of course going to select the original axis you used. And this is not a cut to join. Uh, with that created, just hit OK. <coughs> Sorry about that. And what we can do from here is we can come to section and unhide it. And you can actually see our body here has been created. And you can kind of scroll through and you can look at um, what's been made. So we can kind of rotate this and we, we can get a feel of um, what's been created and if it's what we want. Um, you may need to uh, change the bodies that are shown. Definitely a possibility. Um, so the uh, body one, it's attached. We don't want that. We want it to be free. So. Um, that means that we need to change this. So I'm going to edit this feature. And I don't want it to be a join. I want it to be a new body. And that's going to correct that little error there. So as you can see, now it's its own thing. So what I need to do now is um, I need to change the, the appearance of these parts. So I'm just going to cycle through and I'm going to make uh, these two red. I'm going to unhide my analysis. And I want to make this uh, green. Um, I want to change the color, the colors basically of of a lot of these things uh, to make it easier to understand what's what's going on. Body four is attached, and our body five is going to be green as well. These two gaskets are different; are the same color, which is good, and we want this to be the same color as well. So as you can see, uh, we have our rod and we have our plunger. And I could also play around with the, um, with the settings here for the visual style. So I can make this uh, wireframe with hidden edges. And I can view inside my part and get a better idea of what's going on inside with that as well. So let's go back to um, shaded with vis visible edges. And from here, what we want to do is we want to create the cylinder because we now have um, our plunger created. I'm just going to save this. And 
I'm going to start a sketch on the YZ plane. And this is going to be a new sketch. Uh, we don't want to go too crazy within one sketch, so this is going to be new. And what we're going to do here is we're going to um, create, let's try a three-point rectangle. So a center rectangle. And we can just kind of drag this out. And if I click on this line and I click on the origin, I can make it a midpoint. And I can drag this up and drag it down. I can, I can change the sizing as well. And if I want to, I can click on that line, come to create, project, and just hit OK. And that's going to project that line for me, the top line of the gasket. So I can click on this line, click on this point, make them coincident. And as you can see, it's going to be it's going to do the same thing on the other side because because uh, this is a center rectangle. So anything done on the top is done to the bottom. Now, let's try something a little bit different. I'm actually going to move this line underneath where the gasket is. And the reason I'm I'm going to do that is because um, I want to set a dimension here between them. So between this line and this line, uh, this point and this line, I want to set a dimension because that's the, the crushing distance. It's actually interfering. The gasket is interfering with the cylinder. And that's what we want because we want an airtight seal. Um, that being said, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, leave it at about there. And with that created, we can build the rest of our cylinder. So I can drag a line up and come all the way across and then come down. And we want to do that same thing on the other side. Come down and across and back again. And we can set a dimension here. Um, I want this to be about an eighth inch, so 0.125. And same distance on the other side. And what I could do is I can drag a line from the origin that meets the other end of our cylinder. And if I so choose to, I can make this a construction line. And what we want to do from here is we want to make sure we have a closed shape. Um, so as you can see, that is a closed shape. Um, we don't really need the rest of these, so I'm going to make these construction. I'm going to make this construction as well. This is really just uh, for imagining our assembly. Uh, we're only going to use one of these within our sweep. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to create the sweep. I'm going to just drag this out uh, from this point because I want this to come a little bit further out. And you can disconnect the line if you need to. I just want the, uh, the cylinder to come out from the rest of the part. I'm going to make that vertical. And uh, we're just going to leave it at that for now. Um, we can always kind of drag this around later. Um, you could drag it to this point if you want. It's it's really however long you want your pressure cylinder to be. I mean, we can just set a dimension here to uh, a dimension for the length here to be uh, let's say seven inches. And let's come to revolve. And with this profile selected, we can just select the axis here. And it's going to be a new body. And you can actually make it a new component if you want, because that, that's really what it is. It's a new component. And as you can see, our um, plunger is now inside the cylinder. And what you can do is I have compo component color cycling on. I can turn that off if I so choose to. Um, it can be helpful, but it, it can also be a little bit annoying as well. And I can right click and change the opacity to be, say, 60%. And I can actually look through here. 
look through my cylinder. So that's if you right click on component because this is a new component, you can change that. You can make it say 20%. And that's very helpful. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to imagine um, what you're working with and how it works. You, you can look right through parts. Uh, it's very helpful. So what we want to do from here is um, we want to uh, combine some of the stuff that we've created. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide this cylinder. Uh, we don't really need it right now. And I want to combine uh, this piece, this piece, and this piece. And that's going to be a single part. They're going to be joined. And I want to do the same thing. Now I can just hide the whole thing. Let me just hide this whole thing. I want to do the same thing on these other parts as well. So I'm going to click on uh, this body and this body. And I'm going to join them. And now that they're joined, you can see you can actually uh, select through everything here. Um, now that they're joined, it's one part. So I can kind of unhide it and I can rotate and I could see everything uh, much easier now. It's much easier to work with this assembly because of the fact that uh, this part is now one piece. As you can see, that's what it looks like on the inside. We have that tapped section in there. And you can even see the gasket and its interference with the rest of the part. And if we cut this in half, if we come back to our section, you can cut it and you can see the, the piece is actually in there. The gasket is fitting inside. Off camera, I added a couple more gaskets and a couple more revolved cuts for those gaskets. Um, I created them in the same way that I showed you before. So let's turn off our section uh, because what we want to do now is we want to create the gasket for the actual tube. The way we're going to do that is we're going to start a sketch on this face. That's the side of the tube. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this face and click P on the keyboard. And I'm just going to project these two, two circles. And when I do that, I can come to solid and just extrude. And I can bring this up to, let's say, about 60 thousandths. Um, but it's not going to be a join. It's going to be a, a new body. And I want to do the same thing here on the other side. So let me create a sketch right on this face. Click on it. Click P as in Peter on the keyboard. Hit enter. And you can do the same thing. Come to solid. Extrude and bring this up to about 0.062, something like that. And this is going to be our gasket here. It's going to be a new body. And so we now have uh, two gaskets um, for sealing the uh, cylinder. And from here, what we need to do is we need to create the actual ends of the cylinder. We're going to start with the easier one which is this end. What we're going to do now is add the caps to the ends of the cylinder. Now the way to do that is I'm going to look at my section view here under analysis and I'm going to start a sketch here on the YZ plane and within this sketch what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a revolution just like before. So I'm going to place down a couple of lines and with those lines placed, I can kind of move them to where I want them to be. I can make these uh, vertical with each other, these two points. And I can also choose to project uh, some of these lines. So now that this is projected, I can set a dimension here uh, between these two to be, let's say, five thousandths of an inch. And that's going to help um, 
with making sure that it's close. Now the same thing can be done here on the bottom. So if I click on project, I can project uh, one of these points as well. And so now I have uh, two points that I could work with. So I could set a dimension uh, between this line and this point and I can make it 5,000 just like I did the other one. And I can also set a dimension here or rather make uh, these coincident. And with that having been created, I can just create the rest of the shape. So let me come up, come out, and I'm going to come down and place this line um, where the center line of this part is. Now this point I'm going to drag to the origin and if you notice my shape here is something that I can easily revolve now and I can create one solid shape out of this. So from here I'm going to make this a construction line and I'm actually going to draw another line between them to close up the shape and when I finish the sketch um, in case it's a little bit hard to see within the video, there are three closed profiles and um, we want to select all three of them. So as you can see, this is the shape that we have right now. And this shape is on top of this gasket that we created uh, just before. And this is the, one of the end caps. So you can actually edit the sketch even after it's made. Uh, which I think is really handy. So I'm going to revolve these three shapes and my axis is going to be the dotted line. Now this is going to be a new body. Now you can choose to make this a new component if you want. Uh, for this example we're going to set it for new component uh, because this is kind of a new component, a new part. So I'm just going to hit OK there. And if I rotate this you can see that I've created a cap right here. Um, so that's that's great. Um, we may want to change the color of this very quickly. That's the gasket. We want to make sure that we don't mistake it for anything else. And with that done, um, what we want to do is we want to move on to adding some flanges here. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to start a sketch here on the back face of this. And I'm going to add um, some rectangles. Or actually a slot uh, is likely more uh, beneficial to us. So uh, within this dialog box, you're going to see a bunch of different options that you can choose from. Um, but the slot is down here and we want to do a center point slot. So click on center point slot and you can drag this out and just kind of open it. And we can do that same thing here on the other side. And you can also um, project the axes. So I'm going to project this axis by clicking P on the keyboard and hitting OK. And I can set a dimension between uh, the, the axis and this line to be 45 degrees. And same thing on the other one. I want it to be 45 as well. And the other thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that this uh, center line is the same on both. So for right now, I'm just going to set it to be 3.5. We can always change that later. Um, we're going to make these equal to each other. And because they're parametric, it, it's easy to just kind of change a dimension around so I can make this 2.5 if I want, as long as it looks the way I want it to look. All right, so that's, that's good. Now we want to set a dimension here on the width of this slot. And that's going to be a dimension of, let's say, 0.5. And same thing over here on this one. So I want to set this to also be 0.5. And we're going to finish the sketch there. Now from here, all we have to do is just extrude upward. So I'm just going to select 
these four corners and I can just drag this up and what you can do is you can just do for extent you could do to object and then just select this face the face of the one side of that cap and that's automatically going to uh, do it for you and yes this is a join operation because we're joining this solid to another solid so as you can see um, this is our result and we're still in a section view so I can turn that off if I want and so that that's what we want it to look like um, at least on one side now the other side is going to be a little bit more complicated but before we do that let's just take a, a look at, through the section so as you can see our um, our gasket is right here that's this part that you're looking at and the cap is pushing on that gasket and we're gonna have to do one last operation here at the end but until then we're, we're, we're gonna work on this cap up here at the top so let me turn off the section again and let's add the top cap so we want to design it in the same way that we did the other one um, we're gonna start a new sketch now again we're gonna we're gonna start with a new sketch and it's gonna be on the YZ plane same deal as before Now off camera, I created this shape here. I did it the same way that we created the last shape. I also created these cutouts and two rectangles for the gaskets. Now I did this off camera because I don't want the video to run on for too, too long. So I'm going to um, create one more line here and that's the line that's from the origin. And what am I creating this line for? You guessed it, it's for the axis. So um, that's, that's what we're going to use to rotate it against. So um, with this center line created from the axis, just like I mentioned, we're going to uh, finish our sketch and we're going to revolve what we have here, this solid. Make sure that you select all of these rectangles. And we're going to rotate it along this axis, which I'm going to select. And this is going to be a new component. And with all that created, we're just going to hit OK. And we're going to check our result to make sure that it's right. So as you can see, this one is a little bit different than the last, this cap. And the way that it's different is uh, this one has a hole through the center. So when I created this one, I didn't rotate it with the bottom line on the axis of rotation. I actually had it raised up a little bit. And if I show the section we can actually see that so you can actually look inside and you can see that uh, there's a portion of, of here that's that only comes up to here and the rod passes through it and so uh, what we want to do is we want to rotate the um, the gaskets as well so we're gonna have to create a second revolution And so we can edit our original feature and we're going to select uh, these profiles. So it may um, be hard to pick it out, but you just have to zoom in and, and pick out that profile and then it'll come up. So. Uh, now we have our two gaskets and we have our piece here. And under component three, um, you will see that there are actually uh, three bodies here. So these gaskets are actually separate parts, uh, which, is it, which is the way that we want it to be. We don't want those gaskets to be attached. And in reality, they're not attached. There's a gap around them. So from here, what we want to do is we want to create the sort of ears, um, if you will, that we created on the bottom piece. And we're going to do that in the same fashion that, that we did before. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a sketch on this face. 
except this time for expediency what I can do is I can click P on the keyboard and I can select these lines and with them selected I can just project all of them and I can just extrude those projected lines and just like before we're going to choose instead of distance we're going to do two object and we're just going to select this face right here and that's automatically going to extrude it to that face and so there we have it now one one of the last things that that we really need to do here um, for this you know basic pressure cylinder uh, other than save which uh, is very important is we want to create holes that run through here so I'm gonna just select this face I'm gonna show you how to do that right now and what I want to do is I want to project this one more time so you can either come down here and select project or click P on the keyboard and I want to make it uh, construction the projection so click on construction here in the sketch palette and now what I can do is it's it's a little bit hard to see but it actually selected that's the center of this arc which is which is really helpful because what that means is I can drag out a circle so I can make this 0.25 whoops let me try that again it happens um, let's turn off construction let me give this a dimension so 0.25 in diameter and let's do that on the other three we're, we're just going to do that the old-fashioned way here uh, manually and see I need to deselect that okay so let me do that here and let me do that on this one and we're gonna set these all to be equal to each other so let me click on equal let me click on this circle this circle this one and this one and this one and this one and now they're all equal to each other and the great thing about this is what I can do is just finish the sketch and click extrude and if I select all of my circles here I can just drag and cut all the way through everything and once I do that I now have all the holes I need so I can come to create and I can click on my thread feature and I can just go in here and select um, I can select these um, holes for threads so you can really only do one at a time but um, what we want to do is we want to think about um, how one of these is going to be clearance holes and the other one is actually going to be the threaded holes so uh, for this example we're going to only thread the bottom one so I'm gonna uh, just do all four of these holes and we're gonna leave the um, default thread just for now and we're going to do that on the other two as well and with that created um, we now have our threaded holes and if you want to make this look a little bit nicer we can actually model in the thread so come over here and click on modeled and that's going to model in those threads so those threads become physical they become uh, part of the model they change the actual mesh geometry of your part and so that's gonna that's gonna look uh, different than before so that being said um, what we've done here is we've created a situation where we can have a rod a threaded rod that passes through this hole with this hole being a clearance hole and it actually runs into this hole and it's threaded through this tapped hole so uh, we're about going to leave it at that for this tutorial and um, thank you for watching